The advent of the digital economy has had a transformative effect on how firms compete, how consumers behave, and how markets work. For the most part, this effect has been hugely positive, leading to innovation, reductions in transaction costs, and greater choice. At the same time, though, the emergence of few powerful platforms, the significance of data, and the use of algorithms have given rise to strong competition concerns, such as possible abuse of dominance or collusion. Amidst this complex and dynamic environment, competition authorities have been presented with challenging questions concerning the proper role for the application of competition law. The specific features of digital markets have changed the method traditionally used by competition authorities to define the relevant markets and assess market power and dominance, for example, the famous hypothetical monopolist test. Such features include the network effects, two or multi-sided platforms, zero pricing and cross subsidization between different markets, interoperability, switching costs and multi-homing, big data, consumer behavioral biases, tipping, and ecosystem competition. Competition authorities have increasingly been taking at least some of these factors into account when defining the relevant market and assessing dominance, although the exact relevance and weight may not always be clear. Big tech companies in digital markets have been the target of several famous antitrust decisions for abuse of dominance. There is no single definition of abuse and no single legal test for the assessment of abusive pre-business practices under the competition rules. The digital economy has led to the emergence of novel practices that may not necessarily fall within the traditional pre-existing types of abuse, triggering heated debate about the appropriate legal treatment. One of these new practices is self-preferencing by which the owner of a platform abuses its position to grant a preferential treatment, for example, higher visibility, to its own products or services. Competition enforcement has also dealt with interoperability, privacy, and the way digital operators collect, share, and use data. For example, some cases addressed the refusal by digital giants to give access to data that were necessary for rivals to provide the services. Other cases questioned the collection and use of data, particularly in cases in which rivals that compete on the same platforms do not have access to the same data, or in cases where the collection of data falls short of the data protection requirements. Collusion is any form of arrangement between independent companies aimed at coordinating and their competitive behavior on the market or influencing parameters of competition. The most harmful form of collusion is cartels, that is, anti-competitive arrangements between competitors to fix prices, control the level of production, or allocate customers or territories. A new form of collusion that might become more frequent in the near future is algorithmic collusion. Nowadays, nearly all companies that sell online use algorithms to set and adjust their prices. This is usually beneficial for both the firms and consumers, but may also re make restrictive agreements easier to establish and maintain. In particular, algorithms may be used by cartelists to implement and monitor pre-existing anti-competitive arrangements. Moreover, the use by competitors of the same pricing algorithm may ultimately lead to coordination. This could be the case where multiple sellers operating on the same platform use, as a result, the same software to set their price, or where more rivals in the market use the same pricing algorithm provided by third parties. Going a step further, we cannot exclude the emergence of tacit collusion resulting from a mere interaction of pricing algorithm, even in the absence of human intervention. In these cases, where there is no direct or indirect communication between companies, algorithmic collusion might be harder to detect, prove, and remedy. 
At the same time, it is unclear whether firms that have no knowledge of or power to control the collusive outcome resulting from the use of the same algorithm should be liable for antitrust violation. Generally, vertical agreements between economic operators active at different levels of the supply chain, for example suppliers and buyers, are less problematic than horizontal arrangements between competitors. The EU Block Exemption Regulation on Vertical Agreements, adopted in 2022, exempts from the antitrust prohibition vertical agreements that do not contain so-called hardcore restrictions, where the market shares of each of the parties to the agreement do not exceed 30%. The Block Exemption Regulation and the accompanying guidelines contain specific rules and guidance on online restrictions. Under the regulation, online resale price maintenance and minimum advertised prices, as well as de facto prohibitions of the use of the Internet and bans on the use of entire online advertising channels are considered hardcore restrictions. Market bans, restrictions of online advertising that do not amount to de facto bans of the use of specific advertising channels, quality requirements and the requirement to operate an offline store are exempted if all other conditions of the block exemption regulation are met. Detailed guidance is also provided on parity obligations. The enforcement of competition law involves significant challenges. The features of digital markets put into question the effectiveness of the tools and concepts of competition policy. In some jurisdictions, extended regulation of big platforms has been introduced to help address some of these concerns more effectively and timely. In the EU, the Digital Markets Act provides a detailed list of do's and don'ts for gatekeeper platforms, banning many of the practices that have been at the heart of recent antitrust investigations.